New processors are released almost every year. The 12th generation of Intel processors introduce us to their hybrid architecture that is utilizing performance cores and efficiency cores. If you want to find out more about that architecture, click on the info card in the top right hand corner. Now the 13th generation of Intel's processors are here again with this hybrid architecture and an array of improvements from gaining more E cores and higher all core frequencies with increased cache and communication between the cores themselves. Today I'm doing a simple upgrade to my PC, which is currently running on an Intel Core i9-12900K and upgrading it to a Core i9-13900K. I'll explain the new improvements, the ease of upgrading and the upgrade path, the effect of undervolting and my real world use by taking advantage of this hybrid architecture. Thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video and if you're interested in the products presented here, all links will be down in the description below. First off, what kind of differences are we seeing here between the 12th and 13th gen Intel Core processors? I've got the Core i9-13900K and the Core i5-13600K with me today. Both processors represent a different camp of buyers, those that want the flagship and those that want something more cost effective. So what kind of difference are we seeing here? Going from the 12900K to the 13900K has now doubled the amount of E cores, making a total of eight P cores and 16 E cores for a total of 32 threads. There's more L2 and L3 cache, improved all core frequency for not only the P cores, but the E cores as well. There's also increased memory speed support for DDR5 5600. The 13600K sees similar improvements from the 12600K, but the biggest difference being that the 13600K now has doubled the E cores as well. Those are the key differences I really wanted to highlight here. Usually yearly updates can be quite minimal between processor generations, but this is starting to show the refining process for Intel's hybrid architecture. Upgrading a PC can be tedious, I know, but don't worry, I'm here to explain the ease of the upgrade path with a relatively new CPU architecture. And what I mean by that is new technology can be quite proprietary. If you have a 12th generation processor, then your upgrade path will be even easier. Since this uses a new socket, you will need some sort of Z or B series 6th or 7th generation motherboard. I have a Z690 in my current PC and I'm using it to upgrade to the 13900K with a BIOS update. Regardless, you will have two generations of motherboards to choose from now. Also, you can continue using that DDR4 memory you have as well. Oh, and if you don't like upgrading to Windows 11 to utilize a thread director, you don't have to do that either. These three areas make it fairly easy to update as you go with your PC. Will you be leaving performance on the table by not using Windows 11 with a thread director and not using DDR5? Absolutely. However, it's not necessary and can give you the option to buy some DDR5 when you're ready or upgrade to Windows 11 when it becomes more appealing to you. And that's pretty much what I'm doing because the holidays are coming up, got a lot of presents to buy. so. The PC upgrade is going to have to take the backseat for a little bit. Now my use case for this upgrade is simple. I just want the added E cores going from the 12900K to the 13900K. Now the 13900K can get quite toasty under load trying to reach that peak advertised frequency. However, you can get most of the performance on the CPU while undervolting it just a bit. It reduces temperature and power consumption while providing nearly identical performance. And this can be done on the fly with Intel's tuning utility called Extreme Tuning Utility. That doesn't require restart every time a CPU operating parameter is changed. Another place that performance is left on the table is with DDR5 memory, which is thankfully becoming more widely available, and the other is with the thread director on Windows 11. Essentially, Windows 10 reads the E cores and P cores as the same and runs them the same. Performance is still good, however, it can create inconsistent and varying results. I'm fine with it for right now, but we'll soon plan on upgrading to Windows 11 and grabbing some DDR5. For me, I usually have three Adobe apps open while playing video games in between the time that I do have and I want every last e-core to be running other tasks going on in the background. At least that's the use case for me. I don't want to upgrade my entire system every time a new processor comes out. Not a lot of people do. However, I utilize my CPU a lot and upgrade it quite frequently, even before my sponsorship with Intel. Regardless of that frequency, I want to upgrade it easily without having to dedicate a budget to a whole new system or half the core components. Having two generations of motherboards and memory to choose from if I did have to upgrade those items also makes it an appealing choice to upgrade. And I have a question for you guys as well. So do you incrementally upgrade your PCs or do you kind of wait, save up, and then just upgrade the whole thing at once? I really want to know because I've been debating this myself for the last couple of years. I hope you all enjoyed the video and thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video and thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.